to EMI noise, we often divide the noise into two types. One is the differential mode noise, and then the other one is common mode noise. Uh, lots of people think when we talk about differential mode noise and common mode noise, it's uh, mostly related to conducted emission, which is not true because I would say 90% of the radiated emission actually also come from the fact that common mode currents travel on uh, antenna structures such as cables or PCB trays and things like that. When it comes to differential mode noise, it's rather easy to understand. As, as we show here, you have uh, a yellow uh, arrow basically indicates that's the differential mode current. Um, and the common mode current is so sometimes quite difficult to understand. Um, people can get a grasp of what it means, but um, often it's not the case. Even we demonstrated here that um, in this case, um, the common mode current actually travel on both lines of, uh, of a product. Say this is the live and this is the neutral and this is a handheld device. Um, this could be a hairdryer, could be a hand drill and things like that. And in this case, in this particular case, the noise, the common mode current uh, travels using human body as a parasitic capacitance. And then part of the return path for this energy is, uh, is the ground or, or earth, let's say, where we stand. Um, common mode uh, current not only use earth or ground as a part of transmission line, they use every possible metal structure that they can find. For example, if you have um, metal bars or beams in your house, they will use that structure. If you have uh, a, a metal plate, perhaps just nearby, they will use that metal plate, simply because energy always prefer to travel, use the least impedance path. Um, what does it mean? Let's have a look. I think this probably is much easier to understand. So in this case, we have a simple model to demonstrate. We have a, a mains powered product, but then we have a switch mode power supply, isolated switch mode power supply, which is a flyback converter. And in this case, as you can see, as the switch switch on and off, uh, if you measure between the VDC plus and VDC minus, we're measuring differential mode uh, noise, right? Um, but in fact, in, in the world of physics, this point to this Earth point also has a potential change, isn't it? And imagine if this is not Earth, as I said, it could be a metal bar, it could be a metal plate somewhere in, in, in this environment. This point to that metal bar will also have potential difference. Same with the VDC minus point, which will also have potential difference. So this is the uh, common mode voltage we often refer to. And once you have common mode voltage, since this unit and the earth or the metal plate will always have some parasitic capacitance, um, you, you will introduce um, common mode current. Um, people often find it's difficult to visualize the common mode current. So in this case, we're, we're going to show you a very interesting demonstration that you can actually see the common mode current traveling on, on this earth or, or any metal structures. So watch. So what we got here is we have two matched um, RF current probes. So in terms of the impedance, um, these two are pretty much identical. So if they pick up the same signal, they will show the same um, amplitude and phase shift in the oscilloscope or the spectrum analyzer. Then we have the DUT, uh, which is the, uh, uh, the driver for the LED lights uh, on the test. We power it up at the minute. The two current probes in this case are connected to an oscilloscope. Note that in this case, we need to change the oscilloscope um, uh, impedance to be 50 ohms to pick up, the um, pick, pick up the signal. As you can see here, because we're measuring, the common mode current goes into the 
power supply and comes out of the power supply. So these two, as you can see from the results here, they pretty much picked up exactly the same signals. Yeah. So these are the high frequency common mode current signal they picked up. And if I zoomed in, as you can see here, their characteristics are pretty much the same, right? Identical, almost. Um, yeah, so, if I zoom in there, yeah, this is pretty much, this is, yeah, you can see, if I do that, yeah, you can see that, yeah. And the next step, which I'm going to demonstrate, which, which you will be amazed to see is, since we know that the RF current travels on this line, as we explained, what I'm going to do the next is I'm going to disconnect this RF current probe and I'm going to clamp just on this table stand here. Look, this is a metal uh, uh, post for this big um, table here. I'm going to put this current probe put it in here and then see what happens next. Okay, now we remove the um, RF current probe from this place and then we put it in on this post of this um, uh, metal table which stands on earth, yeah, as you can see here. And then what do we get? This is what we get, look. It also picked up RF current which apparently travels on the surface of this uh, metal plate and if i stop this and then let's say let's zoom in this is the zoomed in uh, result as you can see we have um, the uh, common mode current in yellow which is picked up by this rf current probe and then we have the blue trace which is picked up by this rf current probe and as you can see here quite clearly of course, they will have different amplitudes and also different uh, phase shifts. And this is a good demonstration to show that when the common mode current travels, they use any possible metal structure that they can find. So in this case, they find the metal structure of the table. They find the earth, of course, as a, you know, as a part of the transmission line. And I'm pretty sure if I clamped on this, I will also be able to measure some common mode current um, on this post here.